Hello people, in this video let us look at what to do if a person presents with secondary aminorrhoea. That is, she has had not periods in the, she has not had periods in last 6 months. Okay, that is secondary aminorrhoea. So basically understand the concept, she has regular cycles. Okay, but for the last 6 months, uh, she has not had her regular cycles. So basically no menstruation in a previously normally menstruating woman. Okay, that is secondary aminorrhoea. So basically here, the first thing they want to do is exclude pregnancy. Okay. And then they want to estimate a lot of things like they want to estimate your thyroid levels and prolactin levels, etc. Thyroid and prolactin levels they are checking. <coughs> so basically they are checking the for first thing they are doing is uh, pre, uh, progesterone challenge test. If uh, she has withdrawal bleeding, okay, if she has withdrawal bleeding after progesterone challenges, then everything is uh, fine. That is the hype, hype, not everything, but at least the hypothalamus pituitary axis is fine okay uh, ovarian axis is fine hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis is fine that means uh, now she is bleeding after uh, progesterone challenge test which is okay which is good uh, so they are checking about the estrogen levels if estrogen levels are also more then they are checking the fsh and lh levels if they those are also more then they are checking for the uh, ultrasound of the pelvis and they are uh, finding out if it is a pcos that is a polycystic ovarian syndrome now, even after a progesterone challenge test, if she did not bleed, then they are doing a estrogen progesterone challenge test. Two, two things, estrogen progesterone challenge test they are doing. And if bleeding occurs, so we will go to this side of it. If bleeding occurs, guys, then the endometrium is responsive here uh, because bleeding is occurring. So, definitely, uh, then now what will they check? They will check for FSHLS standard procedure. And if FSH is high, that means to say that there is some problem with the ovary right there can be some problem with the ovary so they are checking for karyotyping if it's chromosomally everything is fine in that person now coming to the side if fsh is low right that means uh, there is no stimulus right so they are going to check why is this lh less lh is less because of hypothalamus or pituitary dysfunction so they are going to the side and checking whether it is, uh, it is a hypothalamic or a pituitary problem by doing a gnrh dynamic test that is a gonadotropin releasing hormone test they are checking to check whether it is a hypothalamic problem or a pituitary problem. So if bleeding occurs, everything is fine, right? Uh, they are taking this path. Now what if bleeding did not occur? If bleeding did not occur, then uh, they are going to check after an estrogen progesterone challenge test, if bleeding did not occur, guys, they are checking if there is any uterine synecae, etc. Because there is no bleeding, so you can understand, right? So whether there is a functioning endometrium or not. So the endometrium is not functioning. There could be some adhesions which is not allowing the bleeding to happen, is it? So then they are doing a hysteroscopy, hysterosalpingography and they are confirming or ruling out synecae, some adhesions. The synecae, right guys, they are also calling it as Asherman syndrome. Asherman's syndrome. Okay, Asherman's syndrome. Basically here there will be adhesions. Uh, you know, f following an abortion or a pure peril curatage, okay, there can be some, uh, also, there is some diagnostic curat curatage, right? So, basically, there can be some adhesion, some synecae, okay? So, in this people, what will happen? The progesterone challenge test will be negative. You have seen this. Progesterone challenge test will be negative. So, after that, they are doing an estrogen progesterone challenge test, which is also no bleeding negative, is it? And then they are uh, have to do a hysterosalpingography or hysteroscopy to rule out synecae. So guys, did you understand uh, this part of it? Well, let, let's start here. Secondary amine or hoya, you will exclude pregnancy, right? And then um, you will check the serum uh, high uh, TSH, that is the thyroid stimulating hormone levels and prolactin levels. So basically, if the if the, everything is normal, then only they are doing this progesterone challenge test and estrogen uh, challenge test, okay? If thyroid uh, stimulating hormone is more, then it could be a hypothyroidism. They'll treat that. If a prolactin level is more, even in lactational amino or prolactin is more. But anyways, if prolactin is more, then there can be no uh, menstruation, isn't it? So there may be mild elevation of prolactin level due to increased pulsitivity of the GnRH, okay, or due to dopamine deficiency, etc. So you will have to see this. There can be uh, adrenal androgen production because of which there can be aminorrhoea. Now coming to the last thing that you have to look at is the X-ray CT MRI of the pituitary. Cella tersica you will check. Cella tersica contains what? The pituitary, isn't it? So if you have to check if there is some pituitary adenoma which is uh, putting lot of pressure and re releasing more hormones. Okay. So that is it about uh, secondary aminorrhoea. So these are the investigations that will be done for a 
secondary amino or hoya. We ha what have we looked at? Just the investigations for secondary amino or hoya. What can be the causes of secondary amino or hoya, guys? See, the causes can be uterine factors like um, endometritis, right, or um, a Sinike or a uh, PCOS, right, that is a po polycystic ovarian syndrome, right, there could be an ovarian failure which we looked at here, see, there could be ovarian failure, there could be some resistant ovarian syndrome like a savage syndrome, then there could be some pituitary causes like we told you, right, pituitary causes, there could be like a adenoma, pituitary adenoma, Cushing's disease, acromegaly, Sheehan syndrome, so many things can be there. Then hypothalamic causes can be there. We have looked at that here. Where is hypothalamic cause? See here, hypothalamic cause we have looked at here. Right? So there can be some stress, uh, anorexia nervosa, some strenuous exercise this person has done. So those could be hypothalamic causes, okay? Some congenital malformations, trauma, tumors, infections, okay? All of those are coming under hypothalamic factors for a secondary amino or hoya. Then coming to thyroid, guys, because thyroid, um, if there is, uh, you know, hypothyroid state, the person can have amino or hoya. In general, what are the causes of secondary amino or hoya? It can be because of uh, malnutrition, right? Uh, if the person is malnourished or if the person has some chronic disease, tuberculosis, nephritis, diabetes, if they have. Uh, have but you know that secondary amino here need not be only some condition with uh, pathologic it can be that iatrogenic maybe she is on contraceptive pills uh, some uh, post pill amino hoya can be there like she could be taking some drugs which are causing amino hoya like antihypertensive drugs like risperin dopamine antagonist right and then also if there is some uh, psychotropic phenothiazine derivative drugs so if she is taking that also can cause amino hoya even weight gain, weight loss, okay, sudden, too much of weight gain, weight loss also can cause, um, okay. Let's take a recap of the causes of uh, secondary amino or hoya. So, there could be endometritis, sinike, right, uh, some post-radiation, she has taken some radiation therapy possibly. Ovarian factors like polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, or a ovarian failure or a resistant ovary syndrome. Hypoestro, hyperestrogenic state, more estrogen is there. Or uh, let us see that uh, there is um, a masculinizing tumor of the ovary. The ovary has is become more masculine, like uh, certainly Leydig cell tumor. There can be a hypoestrogenic state. That they said hyper. Now they are saying hypoestrogenic state, isn't it? See here. Here they said hyperestrogenic state. And here they are saying very strange things can cause secondary amino or hoya. Look at this malnutrition. Some diseases like tuberculosis, chronic nephritis, diabetes, okay, general diseases, okay. Iatrogenic, if she's taking contraceptive pills, she can have post pill amino or hoya. Then she can have some drugs that she's taking, um, phenothiazine derivative, okay. So that is psychotrophic, is it? So basically, this will do some dopamine receptor blocking. So dopamine depleting agents, anti hypertensive drugs like respirin. A reserpin, sorry, reserpin, all these can cause uh, secondary amino or hoya. Now look at the sec common causes of secondary amino or hoya. This uh, revision, let's say, look at the ones in red, stress, PCOS, premature ovarian failure, hypothyroid state. At least this much you should check for, definitely. Relax. Treat the hypothyroidism. Okay, then coming to post pill, is she, was she on contraceptive pill? Sudden change of weight, any drugs she is taking. Does she have a pituitary adenoma, she hands? Does she have some uterine sinike? Mostly this will be after some procedures like curettage, etc. that they said. Then malnutrition is there. Is there diabetes? That's it. We covered everything. Okay. So these are the common causes of secondary amino hoya. Where did we come uh, for this video? We came to this video to investigate secondary amino hoya. So basically first thing they will do is exclude pregnancy. Then they will check the TSH levels and prolactin levels. They will check for, uh, then, uh, then, they, then only they are coming this side, progesterone challenge test. Then they are doing an estrogen challenge test. Uh, basically, they will check for um, uh, estrogen levels, uh, FSH levels. Based on that, they, then the GNRH levels if required, right? And finally, they are talking about a X-ray uh, CT MRI of the cella turcica to look for pituitary adenoma. Okay. So... That's it for now guys in this video. Bye-bye.